today on an all-new Dr. Phil. Buckle your seatbelts because our show is filled with 911 calls. This chick is crazy. She's stabbing. Rubber bullets. I was attacked by the Lipstick Bounty Hunters. And people pointing fingers at each other. Were you drunk when we picked you up? No. Our driver said that you were falling over drunk, saying that you were going to have Dr. Phil's wife, Robin. Absolutely not. We do have him on the phone. Alex, are you there? Let's do it. Why don't we stop all the drama, stop all the fighting, and let's go get you better. Here we go. Have a good show, everybody. If I can help get this family back on track, are you willing to do that? Ready, free, take. This is going to be a changing day in your life. Go, Dr. Phil. Well, I tell you what, buckle your seatbelts because today's show is filled with 911 calls, taser takedowns, rubber bullets, stabbings, and people pointing fingers at each other. Take a look. All of a sudden, she shoots me at her butt. Oh, and then and I got tased, and I was just out that door. This chick is crazy. She's stabbing. I'm bleeding. Now she's trying to kill herself. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Get away from me. Get the away from me. Well, that was Vincent, who claims he was falsely accused of pointing a gun at his then-girlfriend, Amanda, during a fight. Now, she says she feared for her life and attempted to defend herself with a kitchen knife. Now, Amanda was arrested by police, taken to the hospital, and then to jail, where this whole saga began. This is the chilling 911 call Vincent DeLuca made in the early morning hours of April 22nd, 2012. A call which Amanda Aruda says, aside from being stabbed, everything else was a lie. She says she and DeLuca got into a fight after a long night of drinking at local bars. The arguing continued when the pair made their way back to DeLuca's Anita Springs home. He followed me into the bedroom. He physically attacked me in the bedroom, at which point he had pulled his gun out on me and threatened my life. I did everything I could to escape him. She wasn't going to let me go. Aruda says DeLuca chased her through the house. As she ran, she says she grabbed a knife from this butcher's block. I did attempt to run from him. Once I did actually have the knife in my hand, I told him to stay away from me. But she says her statements fell on deaf ears with law enforcement at the scene. She was cuffed and taken to the hospital and then to jail. After spending nearly a month behind bars, she was released on bond. The judge has now cleared her of all charges, saying she had the right to stand her ground and save her own life. Well, that's her side of the story. Let's hear Vincent's side of the story. My ex-girlfriend Amanda got away with trying to kill me by stabbing me twice with a large knife. The evening of the incident, we had been drinking for a few hours, and she takes a prescription anxiety pill. I saw her pop a third pill within an hour. When Amanda and I got back to my house, Amanda was still passed out, and I carried her to my bedroom, put her into bed. I went to the kitchen, I poured myself a cocktail. 20 minutes later, Amanda came back out of the bedroom. Her eyes were rolling in the back of her head. She then staggered towards the kitchen, and that's when she went face first into my wine rack. Glasses fell on the floor, and they broke. I helped her up. She was still incoherent. She said, I'm going to go get your gun, and I'm going to kill myself. I jumped up, and I chased after her. When I got into the bedroom, she had the drawer open, and she had her hands in the drawer where the gun was. I grabbed her by the waist, and I pulled her back. I grabbed the gun, and I stuffed it under the mattress as far as I could. I said, you have to leave. She stormed off into the kitchen. I couldn't see what she was doing, but all I heard was this. She came around the corner really fast, and she put the knife up in the air. She jumped on me, and then she started swinging around over my shoulder, and that's when she stabbed me in the back. And she stabbed me right in my leg right here. Blood was gushing down this way. She was laying on the ground with her hands over her head saying, kill me, I want to die. I said, put your clothes on, and get the I called 911, and when the police arrived, she ran all the way down the end of the driveway screaming, he's got a gun, he's trying to kill me. And that's when the cops get out, and they pointed all their guns at me, and they frisked me, and they realized that I did not have a gun. The paramedic immediately told one of the deputies to get me in the ambulance in the next 30 seconds. Well, I don't even remember going into the hospital. The sheriff arrested Amanda, and they took her to jail. 
at her Sandy Ground trial, Amanda claimed that he stabbed me in self-defense, which is a total lie. Once I heard the ruling that she was exonerated and she was free to go, I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep, I was sick to my stomach. I feel like the justice system totally failed me. Amanda is a liar. She deserves to be behind bars. Uh, okay, how did this go so badly? I mean, you've been dating her how long? Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. And you go from two weeks to getting stabbed yes. twice in your house? Yes. Was there anything that you did or failed to do that could have resulted in a different, better outcome? Um, I contributed in no way at all. When none, was, zero. None, absolutely. You just, you just brought her home, this cute girl, where she could go over and watch a movie and have some popcorn. Next thing you know, you're stabbed. Well, she was out cold when we got to my house. She was passed out. I had to carry her to my bed. And then all of a sudden, 20 minutes or so later, she woke up. And she was a different person. Did you hold a gun to her head? No, absolutely not. You, absolutely. you didn't do that? No, I did not. She went for my gun. How did she know you had a gun? I told her, I said, if you're going to be staying here, and if I'm either sleeping or I'm not around or whatever, then you should be able to protect yourself, and you should know where the gun is. So I showed her to her. Big mistake. In case she needs a gun while you're asleep, let me show you where I keep it? That's what I did, yes. Have you had two restraining orders filed on you by girls before? Mutuals, yes. You say you have zero responsibility here, but I've always said the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. If you've been in two relationships before that involve restraining orders, would that foretell that there would be some ownership in this situation? There's none whatsoever in this situation. Let's take a look at some of the text messages that Vincent sent to Amanda. Okay. Now, you're in white. Excellent. Maybe we can find a hot chick to tie up in our room and take turns torturing her together. She says, I don't really like you joking like that, Vinny. You wouldn't like it if I did that stuff to you, joking around or not. I don't know if those texts are from me or her or what. I mean, I don't remember those texts. I really don't. If I did say that, then it was because that is what she likes. Now, Amanda's not here. She was going to be here, and then she kind of got cold feet at the last minute because she said she didn't want to be here with you. Vincent is a stalker, a manipulator, and an abuser of women. He has several restraining orders against him for stalking several women. At the trial, we had the burden to prove that Amanda was acting in self-defense. It was very clear that Amanda stabbed Vinny. What we focused on was why, and the reason she attacked Vinny was because he held her at gunpoint. The charges against Amanda were dismissed. The judge ruled that he did not believe a single word Vinny said, and he absolutely believed Amanda. The next step is definitely to go after the sheriff's department to try and recover Amanda's damages, but also to go after Vinny. I hope he gets what's coming to him. OK, Janice, thank you for being here. Why is your client not here? Does she have something to hide? She doesn't have anything to hide, and that's what I Does she what have I questions that if he asked them or I asked them of her that she doesn't have answers for? What has happened since we won in court, Mr. DeLuca has contacted several people and repeatedly said that she was lying and she was just not emotionally prepared to face him. Does she feel that he tried to kill her? Absolutely, and the evidence that came out during the course of the investigation and the trial was that he held her at gunpoint and repeatedly pushed the gun up to her head until she was able to get away. But you understand, he denies that. Correct. There have been no charges brought against him for that. Why would he just all of a sudden decide to shoot her in the head? Because he's done this to women before. He's held other women at gunpoint. How do you know And that? that's what the other women have alleged in their petitions to get restraining orders from Mr. DeLuca. Does your personality change when you drink? Um, doesn't everyone? Well, I'm not asking about everyone, I'm asking about yours. Uh, probably a little bit, but <clears throat> I probably get happier. You get happier? Yes. Do you get mouthy? Mm, I can be funny. You can be funny? Yes. All right, Vincent says his ex-girlfriend has a history of erratic, violent behavior. But she says he has a history of stalking her. Well, we'll take a look at other inconsistencies in this story when we come back. Amanda has been on uh, the local news channels, uh, slandering, defaming my character, making up lies and talking about things that never happened. She told all of Southwest Florida that I, Vincent DeLuca, put the barrel of a gun to her temple. That never happened. 
she fell into a wine rack and she whacked her head. What Amanda said is not true, it's a blatant lie. And how she got away with attempted murder is beyond me. Tomorrow on an all new Dr. Phil. Explosive relationships. You seem really agitated. I cannot, I cannot believe this. A boyfriend so distraught. You are an angry person. This is a complete act. He can barely talk. He thinks you are absolutely a drama queen, but you're coming out here like a goody two-shoes throwing him under the bus. Plus, actor Tom Sizemore gets real. Did you want to self-destruct? I've never talked about it until right now. That's tomorrow. Amanda was dating a friend of mine back in 2002 for about a year, and she chased him around his house with a butcher knife. She attacked her twin sister in my friend's truck, trying to kill her in the truck. So she has a lengthy history in the state of Massachusetts of mental illness. Well, Vincent's ex-girlfriend Amanda stabbed him twice uh, before he called 911. She stabbed him in the back, and she stabbed him in the leg. She did it with a 13-inch butcher knife. She says he was pointing a gun at her. He says she suffers from a mental illness. What do you say about that? That's absolutely not true, Dr. Phil. She does not have any criminal record at all. However, Mr. DeLuca has been convicted before of stalking in Florida. He's also been convicted of violating restraining orders in the past. And the judge took all of those factors into consideration. Mr. DeLuca had an injunction in place at the very same time he held my client at gunpoint. He wasn't even supposed to legally own a gun in the state of Florida. Is that true? That is true. If all of these things are true, and, and you don't dispute those, you might want to just say, you know, there's enough bad choices on both sides of this. We ought to just move on. Oh, I would love to move on. Matter of fact, we wouldn't even be here after she got exonerated if she just walked away and said, okay, I got away with attempted murder, leave it at that. But she had to keep on pushing. Mr. DeLuca's life was never in danger. His life was she never threatened. She stabbed him twice. She stabbed him twice because he was on top of her and would not let her go. Yeah, I, I'm, listen, I, I'm not, if that's true and, and she was in fear for her life, I, I'm not saying that she shouldn't do whatever she should, but I wouldn't trivialize stabbing someone twice with a 13-inch butcher knife. I mean, that's, that's not just old, weren't nothing. No, but um, it's not attempted murder either. Were you drunk when you arrived here in L.A. at the airport and we picked you up? Was I drunk? Yeah. No. You weren't? No, I was drinking, but I wasn't drunk. Yeah. Because our driver said when he picked you up from LAX, that you were falling over drunk, that your leg was bleeding, yes, and that when you were in the car, that you were quite verbal, and you were saying that you were going to have Dr. Phil's wife, Robin. What? No. <laughs> Absolutely not. Bring him here right now. Why would I say something like that? I said, I told him that I thought she was the most stunning woman on television, and that's what I said to him. Yeah, you were pretty graphic about, about all of that, actually. Is he here? Uh, we're calling him right okay. now. Uh, he's a very fine young man. Yes, he's, he's seen uh, that way. That's so possible. you just said Dr. Phil's wife's the most stunning woman on television, which I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. um, and then you just dropped it right there? No, I said I would like to meet her. Yeah. That's it. Maybe that's where... Uh, the misunderstanding t took place. I guess, possibly. Under what conditions that you might want to meet her. Are y'all suing him? Is that the point? We are. We are, Dr. Phil, as well as the detectives in the case who did... It's not even fair to call it an investigation. And yeah. they immediately believed him and arrested her. By the way, you want...